Hi everybody, it's Carl with Carl's Custom Apps, and today I want to talk about floating baffles. Uh, floating baffles are uh, floating baffle is a term that you'll hear quite a bit, especially when people are talking about tweet amps, and that's because tweet amps uh, like this one, it's really the classic example of a floating baffle. So, firstly, what is a floating baffle? Essentially, what a floating baffle is is a term for a baffle that is that is attached but not attached not so fixed that it that it can't vibrate so in this example you can see that this baffle is just attached by these four bolts and because it's attached to those four bolts it's secure but it can also but it can also vibrate along with the cabinet there are many designs that can do this. So it's not limited to just something that's got the bolts here up, up in front, uh, nor is it limited to tweed amps, uh, but it was just a lot more common in 50s amps and early 60s amps. And so you'll see a lot of designs that have a floating baffle. The other really important part about a floating baffle um, that is the other component that you have to have for it to be considered a floating baffle is the baffle itself needs to be pretty thin. So in in the 50s a lot of the original Fender Tweed amps had quarter inch thick uh, baffles which is really really light. Um, you know fortunately they used light Alico speakers and so it really didn't affect the durability of the amps but you will see uh, you know, I've seen over the years amps come in where someone's replaced the speaker or something heavier, and over time, it's damaged the baffle. So, in my estimation, anything between about a quarter of an inch and a half inch is still adequately thin that it resonates along with the speaker, um, and it could be considered a floating baffle. The the thinner you go, generally the more uh, the more resonance you're going to get out of the baffle, and that's really the key thing about uh, a floating baffle is that it adds to the resonance of the cab. It tends to give the amp a little bit a little bit more of a woody sort of sound that you associate with with older amps. Uh, for our baffles, what we're using is three eighths inch Baltic birch. Uh, Baltic birch is far higher quality than the material that you would have seen in um, in early 50s amps, which was usually pine, and it was cabinet grade pine, but it just wasn't near the quality of what we have now. Um, this 3 8 inch thick baffle, it it's pretty reliable. You can put some pretty heavy speakers in it. You probably still want to avoid doing things like putting EVs in it or something like that. Um, and so yeah, those are the two major components. You will see amps today that appear like it's a floating baffle. A good example would be um, some of Fender's like a Hot Rod Deluxe. It uses the same sort of mounting system that you're seeing here, but the baffle itself will be like a, will be inch thick, and it will be particle board or MDF, and it's just too heavy to resonate. And so you just no longer get the floating baffle effect out of that. Um, so, you know, whether you, you like a floating baffle or not, you really have to try it to know. But I really think it adds to the tone. And I think that you'll, uh, that, you know, any small advantage like that is something a guitarist can use and a guitarist can hear. All right, thank you very much for your time.